This hour is brought to you by Jeremy Temple Law Office of Bloomington. Personal injury, criminal, business, whatever you need, Jeremy Temple Law Office will get you taken care of. Well, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. We'll all be flying. Come on along, we welcome aboard Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Larry coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios on this Friday, May 1st. Welcome aboard, Todd Larry. It's going to be an absolutely beautiful day, man. Yes, it is, and you know what that means. Golf! Yep, a lot of it. The six two nine two day hiatus with that last couple of days weather we've had. So yes, yeah, it's going to be like seventy and sunny today, man. So uh, get out. See eighty one tomorrow. Oh my! This is I did see that this is the first back to back seventy degree days weekend days that uh, we've had since October. Yep. So yep. ready to get out on it. Lots to talk about. Demise Anderson is headed to Loyola Chicago. Uh, we will talk about that. Uh, unfortunately, Ed Schilling was with us not too uh, long ago. His father passed away. Our thoughts are with uh, Coach Schilling as he uh, deals with that during this weird time. I mean, we talk about all the stuff that people have to deal with, Todd, and that during this, this unprecedented time. And, and can you imagine dealing with a, a death of a close family member no. during all this stuff? I mean, my no. goodness. Heck, it's hard enough to, you know, to just manage the – going to visit relatives and, you know, going to, going to help people out and things like that. I mean, imagine dealing with an illness. I, I, I know a lot of people are doing it. So I hate to say, imagine it. Cause I know a lot of people can't imagine it, but yeah, just the, the grief involved in something like that just, just magnifies because of what's going on. It's just, it's, Terrible. He he's just but Coach Schilling so gracious. I mean, he uh, put out a, a beautiful text, and I, I reached out to him, and he was so gracious. He's like just he's so grateful for grateful for having a wonderful father, and so you can see he's a great guy. So you can see the apple didn't fall far from the tree. But uh, our thoughts and prayers with uh, Coach Schilling and his family, though. Yep, for sure. I mean, he's uh, he's just a good person all around, and and it was uh, it was a pleasure having him as a part of the Hoosier basketball family, and and he's just one of those guys you continue to root for no matter where he is, and you know he just took that job uh, at Grand Canyon, and and was getting ready to I think start a next chapter, and and his dad's always been such a big part of his his life and basketball life especially, so yeah, it's 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 a sad time for him. Uh, it's not going to be too sad for Demise Anderson, fortunately. Uh, he is heading to Loyola, Chicago. Uh, you know, we, we always thought, where, where's he going to end up? Is it going to be Evansville? Is it going to be Valpo? Uh, we, we didn't know where it would be, maybe thinking close to home. This was one we kind of didn't think of, kind of under the radar, but great little landing spot for him. Yeah, it is. And, and Loyola kind of put themselves on the map a few years ago. Sister uh, nat- Jean! Yeah, nationally. But they've, you know, they've had a good program, and, and they've got a really good coach that I'm surprised they've been able to hang on to for as long as they have, but they, uh, they, they've got uh, a couple players from the state of Indiana and they come and, and pluck out guys out of here. And, and that's a good pickup, I think all the way around. I mean, that's, that's one of those, you know, this is not like a, a bad breakup and or a bad divorce with Demise leaving Indiana. This is more like a, a, we wish everybody the best. And, and I hope the best for Demise. I hope he f- figures out, uh, you know, what he wants and, and goes there and has success and, and, uh, you know, that that's a team that it looks like it's just fun to play for. Like they I think he'll fit in there pretty well. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity for him. And uh, I think the biggest thing for him is his family. And I think that that's probably what got him where he is. I think that there must be some kind of connection between Indiana and Loyola Chicago. You know, they played a few years ago in that uh, secret scrimmage. And uh, just uh, I know that that's important to Demise. He, he's uh, he, he's so well liked, well liked by the fans, well liked by his teammates. And um you know, things just don't always work out. I mean, you can look at this from a business standpoint because it kind of is, yep. uh, and things just don't always work out. And it doesn't mean anything bad or negative. It just doesn't work out. That's that's okay. Friendships are still going to be there and all that. It's just going to be in a different place. Yep. I mean, it it is. Um, you know, I, I really, I think you're exactly right. I, I really think it's the best case scenario for all involved. I think Demise's basketball career will flourish or have a much better chance of flourishing at Loyola than it would have at Indiana in his last two years. So 
Well, uh, the pressure. I mean, think about the pressure alone, first of all, because right now it's not just it's not, it has nothing even to do with Demisi, but the pressure on Indiana, on Archie, on to the the from the uh, the Hoosier Nation. They want this program to be back to the elite, and that comes with a an enormous amount of pressure. You know that you were there while it was still going on, but even then, the pressure's still there. It never leaves, even when you're succeeding and doing what what the Hoosier fans would love to see them do. Like when you guys were were here, you. you were winning but even then the pressure is still there so imagine what that's like when you're not winning at that level well you know okay so so the pressure for Demisi is there for sure but it, it's a little bit different than it used to be if your team is winning and and having uh you know quite a bit of success and making the NCAA tournament every year the guys who who maybe come in and it takes them a year or two years or sometimes even three years before they really start to click and develop you know, they can kind of uh, fly under the radar a little bit. When your team is struggling and you're they, – they, every, everyone looks at it differently, including – I'm not saying the coaches were doing this. I'm just saying everyone looks at it differently. But from a fan's perspective, you start to think, okay, well, he's using up a scholarship that could – that someone could be producing, you know, in that same position or using that scholarship. And so that kind of pressure is there when your team is not doing that well. And that's not Demise's fault. That's the that's just the fact that the team you know has been has not been winning and uh, regularly and um, you know they, they just the pressure go, trickles all the way down and those guys who it takes a couple years to develop I mean Coach Knight's guys that he would take some time to develop and and become better I mean everybody remembers Brian Evans as a as a you know Big Ten Player of the Year and an All American but you know he didn't come in that way and it took him a little time to develop and get there and and but you he had that freedom because the team was having success yeah and uh we like i said we we wish him the best and i think it's going to be great for him looking forward to it uh you know we keep talking about when we can get back to normalcy and all that because we don't know all that we're waiting we just talked about indianapolis extending their uh uh, stay at home order till to May fifteenth. We're waiting today. Governor Holcomb, he could be. I, I'm not. He may be speaking right now. For all I know, uh, I don't think it's till like two thirty. Uh, of course, it's going to be right after we get off of. Sir. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he's going to come out today. But regardless of that, Iowa announced they're going to. They they're, they're, right now they are planning to commence practices June first with their athletes. Now this is Iowa. This is not Indianapolis. Uh, Iowa's not been hit like Indianapolis or other areas where you have these hot spots, uh, and they're, they're fortunate in that matter, but they're going to get to open up practice. That's not the same here. It's it's a different scenario, but advantages. Think about the advantages for football and, and that that type of You're thing. You're saying the university is over Yes, there? yes. Oh, yes, yes, my bad. University of Iowa. Huh. Yeah, well, that is that is a dramatic uh, difference. But there's, you know, that's still – 30 days away from and, there, I, and, so. and, and I'm not saying that they're going to have 125 football players out of here together and all that, but they are starting They're They're coming in. Whereas like here facilities are locked out there. You're done. You're out. And, and, and that's the thing that we could look at possibly starting to open up. And, and I could definitely see, I mean, June 1st, think about all the way back to April 1st. It seems like a half a lifetime. Ago. <laughs> I'm telling and, you. So June 1st, there could be so many, different changes and things that have yeah, you can on. say anything you want to say just like right. right now mitch daniels at purdue saying we're going to have classes yeah you can say all that you want to say but let me tell you when it comes down to it you're going to happen what's going on at the time so all, all you've got to do to erase that later on is just say hey we you know what for the health and safety of our students <laughs> we don't feel like this is the right time to do this and then that that eliminates what you said four months ago about how oh, we're opening up for sure Indiana came out, uh, uh, President McRobbie, yesterday saying that uh, it's possible that they'll have fall in-person classes, and but it's not likely. Uh, the, the, the most likely scenario is a mix of both, which tells me they want the students on campus because I don't know that they can afford to not have them here. Uh, but the, the, they may be doing a mix of in-person and virtual classes. Yeah, and... and- you know that does that wouldn't surprise anybody i don't think and and depending on what happens you know may june july uh obviously that that you know there'll be a lot of moving parts and and changes in the schedule of what can and can't happen but you also have to start factoring in i mean these kids if they're going to come on campus i mean you can't say august 15th hey you know we're going to start classes up august 24th um, you know, they'll have to have some, a little bit of, of lead time for that. So 
I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll just see. I mean, I think we're still a month away from really, really knowing the impact of, of what 2020 is going to be. And, um, you know, I, I think we're 30 days away from knowing whether I think we all think football season is a foregone conclusion, even if it's shoved back just a little bit. Um, but but I think we'll know more in the next 30 days for sure. I mean, they're, 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 nobody knows what's going to happen. I mean, they, we keep hearing talk about uh, the football season being shortened or this, that. And yeah. Man, it's May 1st. We don't know what's going to happen August 1st, or September 1st. Well, I read um, I read an article about, you know, Georgia opened up their bars and restaurants and things. What it's well, been that's because they two got weeks that moral ago. governor down well, there. Well, it's been a couple of weeks ago they did that. And I saw some interviews with some of the restaurant owners and, and they said even with the strict restrictions and everything that they've had, the the guy said in our first four days of being open, we had two customers. So it's not like people are being total idiots just running out and you know, going it's good, it's good to see that even though some leaders are idiots that the people are already following. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you keep blowing that horn. I'm going his direction. Uh, Ryan hit us up on the text line. It says, hope all is well with you and Todd. Uh, Jake, this morning, I know Todd will be getting some golfing later today. You ain't lying. You know uh, that. You know that is a fact. Uh, let's see. Tim also hit us up this morning. I've already lost that. Oh, he's asked about, uh, will are you – and Demizi play against IU in a secret skimming. Are they scheduled to play in secret skimmage again? Uh, I asked Tim, you have to let us know that. If, I didn't it's, know that they were, but it's called a secret scrimmage for a reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how would we yeah, know that? Exactly. Uh, he says that Trace Jackson Davis is listed at number two on uh, SI's top returning player list. Not not a surprise there. I mean, he's he's a guy that we know is is he's on a he's on a course with the NBA here sooner number, or later. Number two. In the returning, nation. yeah, I guess returning player in the nation, I guess, but the second all. best player in the nation, returning, returning. Oh, oh, okay, so every kid, so so Luca Garza is number one, and he's number two. Is that the way it is? Do you think Luca Garza is going to come back? I don't know. I, I can't. I, he I hasn't can't announced see that. yet, so he would have to be on that list. Yes, because the NBA draft list came out. Jake, he wasn't on there, was he? The what NBA, the NBA, you had to have already declare for the NBA. If well, you I didn't know he didn't even enter. No, I don't oh believe so. God. But that's, I mean, that's, I, I guess I'm. Hey, I love Trace Jackson Davis. I'm no, me too. Saying, I'm just not looking forward to Indiana having to play. You're Iowa honestly telling Garza. me he's listed as the number two rated overall player in the nation coming back. That's just, I, it's just a list, man. They throw they throw out lists just to get people to do this. To I'm talk. researching this right now. Uh, I don't know. Talk about know. returning players, but. But yeah, if, man, if Luca Garza comes back, holy crap! It's Iowa is going to be a juggernaut, uh, and, and the way they play, that's not a team that you want to see having talent because they they're tough to, to play against. They play yeah, smartly, they play well. They well, they play they, like you guys. They remind me of they Indiana. shoot the ball well. Yeah, they shoot the ball well, and and teams that do that, um, you know, they become difficult to play against, and and. You know that's a team that plays hard. They've got a bunch of smart players, and they shoot the ball well. I mean, who's not who's not going to be afraid to play against that? I mean, there's no question. Luca Garza changes everything for them because they'll oh go. God, from, he changes everything for every for college basketball. <laughs> yeah, he changes everything for college basketball. He makes the Iowa to me the favorite. I mean, I know that they're one of the favorites. But I, I man, I, I would sure well, if I had got to put listed, a bet. Yeah, they've got him listed as the favorite for the Big Ten, but. I mean, they've they've got them preseason ranked number five in the country, and I mean, I I honestly don't know how you don't rank them number one. Yeah, I mean, I think that you could easily. They're my, they're my number one if Garza's there because I know what else they they got a lot around him. It's not just Luca Garza; they got a lot coming back. Solid players. Scary. Uh, let's see. Tim hit the text line. Here's the top ten. Oh, you didn't send it to me yet. We'll get that, but uh, this this does this, this is not this is not accurate. I don't know what this is because it says oh, here, it here's a list of the top ten returning players, and number one is James Booknight, that guard from Connecticut. He would not be rated above Trace Jackson Davis for one. Nope. Is this they, just sophomores? Is this just sophomores? Well, it's just a list that uh, somebody sent in, so who knows? We'll have to look, read that later. But uh, we got uh, 
Alec coming up next. We're going to talk about some basketball recruiting. I like lastly from the Hoosier.com. There's been a lot going on, uh, a lot of offers going out, guys, and football both. We'll talk about that later. But uh, with Alec, we're going to talk some basketball recruiting. Stay tuned. You're listening to Indiana Sports Meet with Coyle Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by rivals. Go to the Hoosier.com. Sign up. It's free. We'll be back with all that and more right after this. Tell yourself on the road. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit fda.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. You're on the line with Jamal Meeks, former Indiana Hoosier, number 23, 1992. And I'm on the beat with Jim Cole. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Larry coming to you on this Friday from the Golf Club League Point Studios, powered by Rivals. It's going to be a beautiful day out there. Hope you can get outside at least uh, and get some fresh air in. Uh, help help get the doldrums off, man. A ton of new fo- – I, I said that Alec was going to join us. He's going to join us in the next segment. I don't know what I was thinking. But tons of new football offers out, uh, uh, Todd, uh, and a commitment – Yesterday as well, he get a big commitment from David Holloman uh, from Michigan, a running back. Dude runs like a four three forty. That's fast. That is real fast. And we, obviously, <laughs> you heard about the combine, fast. and anybody that uh, anybody that started with four three or four four uh, went real high in the draft. So yeah, that's that's obviously lightning. He had offers from West Virginia, Maryland, Nebraska, Iowa State, Rutgers, plenty of others. But uh, nice, nice pickup for Indiana. Lots of offers out too, uh, and then the basketball side as well. We'll talk about that in the next segment with Alec Lasley. But uh, yeah, they're just 
keep it on rolling right now. This is coronavirus not slowing the recruiting down for anybody, it seems like. Well, especially the more, you know, that they get used to the Zoom calls and and kids get used to to having that as the contact point or communication point. And, um, you know, I, I, about the time we all get used to it and get it settled down, they'll open things up, which we're looking forward to. You think Archie's not loving this? He don't have to go anywhere, talk to anybody. He's probably in heaven. I would say I would say everybody <laughs> probably started out that way. Um, you know, yeah, everybody loves their family, but it's, it's time for a little break. <laughs> You're like, okay, there'll be that's a lot it. of there'll be a lot of not for Archie, but there'll be a lot of road trips scheduled by coaches as soon as these sanctions are lifted. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of recruiting trips scheduled. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, NASCAR. They're going to start racing again May 17th. Seven, you're 17 days from NASCAR returning. We, I may watch my first NASCAR race in my life. Well, it'll be a good May one. It'll be at Darlington. So that's kind of a new place that's without fans, of course. And I'm like, will they notice? Um, the people on TV won't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> they won't notice. Because uh, there's the, a lot the of naked time, chicks but, in the snake pit. Won't yeah, be there, the yeah, there's that. But uh, you got that. I mean, it's something fun. I mean, because I, I found myself watching old races or, uh, of course, old everything. Though I was watching baseball yesterday. Um, I mean, anything. It's weird. You're like, okay, well, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, man, when baseball comes back, I'm going to watch baseball. I'm, I'm going to be you, – you, you, you really start to – it's like it doesn't matter if they show checkers on TV. I'll, I'll watch checkers more. I, I, I am, I'm not falling into this category because I can tell you if baseball was the only sport on right now, I still wouldn't watch it. Yeah, I say that. And I loved playing enough. baseball growing up. I, I'm like, I'm not a baseball hater. It's a hard I sport just, to watch on it, TV. It's painful unless you unless you love baseball, which I don't, and I know some people do. I, unless you absolutely love it, I don't see how you can sit there and watch it. But but people say the same thing about golf, and I could watch golf all day long. Well, they're very similar. What is? ESPN, the Ocho is on tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow, the Ocho on ESPN returns at like, what, 2 o'clock or something? What is that? Yeah. Well, this was born out of the movie Dodgeball. They're, you know, they were, they were making fun of ESPN, you know, ESPN, ESPN two, ESPN news. They had all that stuff. So they could, on, on the movie Dodgeball, they created ESPN, the Ocho. And it, all it broadcast or, things like dodgeball and arm wrestling and just goofy things like that. They're going to have like eight hours of the Ocho on ESPN tomorrow. Arm wrestling. Uh, I don't know what all they're going to have on there, but it's just, really, yes, yes. The goofy, the, the Ocho returns. The bad news for it. them is it's going to be 80 degrees here tomorrow. So I won't see any of that either. You got that right. And a lot of people won't either. A lot of people won't. <laughs> golden tea. They have oh. golden tea coming on. That's hilarious. Okay. Yeah. That no, and that no, brings no, up a couple it. things. Golden tea. Uh, Nick Faldo suggests banning tees from PGA play. What do you think of that? Banning tees. Tees. T. Tee, yeah, the, the, putting the tee in the ground, touching the tee. He's like, hey, let's ban the tees. It'll. It'll. He said it'll. It'll solve this distance problem. The guys ain't that's gonna be hitting 385 yards off the tee with one off of the, the ground. Stupidest things I've ever heard. <laughs> Let, well, why don't we take the air out of the basketball in a basketball? Well, I don't think he meant for people like me. We'll eliminate one on one driving to the basket if we take the air out of the ball. I mean, that's just like there's been other suggestions by people for, and again, this is not for PGA, but for like normal idiots like me to make the cup a little bit bigger. <laughs> Seriously, you've never heard that? Yeah, that was a uh, they, they as a for like municipal courses as a way to increase play when when golf wasn't as popular. They, they, there was just there was one of the ideas. I mean, it's just all kinds of little things to just to get more people out there, make it easy. You know, there, easy. there are things that are called executive golf courses that would be a good place for people that want that to happen to go play. Are they, they're, like, they, they're like forty five hundred yards long? They're real short. Really? Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. There you huh. go. Do we have an executive golf course in Indianapolis? Um, not that I know of. Huh, I, that's pretty cool, though. I've never heard. That's pretty funny. You know, today we would normally be broadcasting from Churchill Downs today. It would be Oaks Day. We'd be down there. You know, I am not dressed the same as I would be if we were doing that. Yeah, I assure you, I'm not either. I would not be wearing this visor and a pullover. I bet Johnny G, I bet Johnny G would be all dressed up today. Well, if he would have been, we'd have got him. We could have done a Zoom. We should have done a Zoom derby broadcast. He goes every year. He, he's always he's one of those limo guys that takes a big bus and goes with well, the Well, tell him we're going with him next year. Idiots. We're going with him. Have you been? Have you not been? I've never been. 
you should go. It's fun. We'll go next. Well, we'll be we'll broadcast there next year. It'll be fun. Well, actually, this fall. Shoot. Almost okay. said the wrong word. Because so, so, <laughs> I forgot it's so coming up this fall. You know me. You know me pretty well. And telling me that I can go sit in a place with 200,000 people. You're looking not forward enticing, to it. You're loving not it. You're loving it. To You're, loving it. You're loving it. You can't wait. I can tell. I'm so, hey, I'm going to social distance long beyond these sanctions when they get hey, I just, and I, I just thought of something, though. This thing is, when is it, Jake? When is the Derby now? September? That's, that's in the middle of football season. Yeah, not this football season. It might be the beginning of football season. Well, there, there's that. There's some truth to that. Maybe they won't be playing just yet. So, wow. I mean, the Masters is going to be in November. That's that's knee deep into football season. Wow. But we don't have anything have, to watch we're now. The, we're going to have the Masters. We're going to have two Masters in six months. It's going to be pretty awesome. Wow, that's wild. Mm-hmm. You'd be the first, oh wow! Somebody could be the first golfer to ever win the Masters to twice. Two majors in a row, Within and a, have it be the Masters inside of inside in six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's no nuts. Doubt. Hey, a, a big story out yesterday. You know, we talked a lot about the NCAA and the Board of uh, uh, Governors or whatever approving or, or suggesting that they move forward with the transfer stuff. Well, the the board of directors met Shot and says, nope. Uh, and the vote's still coming May 20th, but without their recommendation, they're not recommending, yeah. It is not thought that it is going to fly now. That changes a whole lot because a lot of people, myself included, thought this was a this was not even this was just going to happen. And because we've seen all these people hitting the transfer portal thinking probably that that was going to happen, now it ain't happening. Yeah. Well, the Board of Governors is like your parents when they tell you, look, I'm not going to tell you not to do this, <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend that you do this. <laughs> and then you go ahead and do it and you realize how stupid the decision really was anyway. I told you not to do it. Yeah. There's a, there's a strong likelihood that that's the situation we're dealing with right here. The yeah, Board of Governors. Be huge, though. Yeah, it, it, I, I have said you know, I've, I have not agreed with that part of the rule all along. I agree with the name image likeness, paying the players and and figuring out a way to make that so that they get some money for it. If you can figure out a way to regulate it, I am not for the transfer rule. I, I do not understand why it's not that big a deal. You don't even lose a year of eligibility. If you transfer, you just have to sit out a year. There should be a penalty for leaving one school to go to another. That's how important that first decision is for you. That's, that's kind of the, point of the whole process you don't just willy-nilly pick somebody at random or throw a dart like you pick them for a reason and if you change that that decision there, you know it's not it's a penalty in time it's not a penalty in you losing any eligibility so i i just i don't i don't agree with them i think it would be crazy how many people they would see transferring it would be ridiculous i agree but i think the the issue is the NCAA has been so freaking inconsistent and they give no explanation when one athlete requests a transfer or right. a, the immediate eligibility and they're granted that. And then the next guy who may leave the same school, go to a different place is not. And I'm like, wait a minute. And they do not give you reasons why. And it's baloney. They, they have got to rectify that. It's either got to be all in or all out. You, you can't have this guy's okay, but this guy's not. And then not tell you why. Yeah, no, it, it, you're right about that. I mean, not having the guidelines and it basically being, I mean, it, it kind of ends up being a personal decision. I mean, like, you know, how high profile is the school or how high profile is the transfer? But but you saw what it was like last year. I mean, when, when Tom Izzo did not get his transfer from Marquette, you know, immediately eligible, I mean, he threw a temper tantrum. Oh, he was, I, I love yeah. Tom Izzo, but he threw a temper tantrum and he jumped off of that board of governors or whatever it is. He jumped off of that board. He resigned from it. What's about the inconsistency? He, sure. They don't, they gave you no reason. And you're like, wait a minute, you just let this guy go, this guy go, but this guy who's going to make our season, you say no to. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be plus now you get into the fact that they've added this other stuff with uh, boosters being allowed to do the advertising with the players and all that. Well, wow. Now you add the transfer into that, man. How many guys you go, Hey man, you come over here. We, I got a $40,000 deal for you. Yeah. That would oh my gosh. It's all these people that are thinking it's gonna be great. It's gonna be I think it's gonna be horrible for the first few years until they get their sea legs and figure it out yeah. because until it's gonna be like the wild, out. wild west. Yeah, until they figure out how to regulate it. It's gonna be, you know, there's gonna be some craziness. And in some of the first, you know, first of all, it's not happening 
in this coming season coming up. So they've got a little bit of time to tweak it and figure out what they think might be the best solution. But, you know, there might be some big time contracts and, and guys, you know, really benefiting from it right off the bat because, you know, they're not going to be able to. I mean, they may put some sanctions down and warn schools or teams or individual players about things at the beginning, but they're not immediately going to be able to go in and say, hey, you, uh, you guys violated the rule. You're, you know, you, you're banned from a year or you're banned from NCAA and all that. They won't be able to do that at the beginning. It, they're just, there's just no way. There'll be some slap on the wrists. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's just going to be, uh, and I know the the NCAA is just they're pulling their hair out. They don't know what to do because they didn't want to do this. They never wanted to do this. Oh yeah, oh, they're, they're, they're not doing this because to they're it. choosing to. They're oh, not doing no. this because they want they want things to be good for the player. You know, the players. They're they're doing this because they don't have a choice. Yeah. And it was easy for them to not do it. Uh, now they got to figure it out. And unfortunately, I'm like, it's going to come crashing down all at the same time. You had coronavirus to that fact. You had the transfer issue. I mean, it's like, wow, all these major, major things all hitting at once. It's a perfect storm. Well, and, and I'm not trying to say there's anything positive that comes from this, but the coronavirus situation probably helped them delay it some time because it's probably going to, you know, I think a lot of people would have been looking for this to come into play immediately or right away. And and with everything that's going on, it's pretty easy to blame, you know, the current status and situation of everything and say, hey, we're, we're not going to be able to implement this for at least another year. I agree. Tim says, why don't they have a virtual derby race or at least uh, replay derbies in the past or derby this, they, they, this year? That's a good idea. Maybe they will. Surely, gosh, uh, they've, they've replayed everything else. Yeah. I'd be surprised if they wouldn't, but, uh, yeah, we'll sure. see. But, uh, man, we got a lot coming up here. Alec Lasley from thehoosier.com is going to join us to talk about basketball recruiting for Indiana because it is going nuts. All that and more coming up on Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Leary back after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs. Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. For the best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, 
effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit fda.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. Hey, this is Jordan Halls, former Indiana Hoosier. Keep up with Indiana Sports on Indiana Sports Beat. The waterfall with you, my brown eyed girl. I'm not sure if uh, Jake's playing that song for Alec or not, but uh, Alec Lasley joining us from the Hoosier.com right now to talk about some basketball recruiting. Nice little segue there, Jake. Uh, uh, welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat. Coyle Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, of course, powered by rivals. Speaking of which, the Hoosier.com, Alec Lasley, been doing a killer job covering uh, basketball recruiting for, for the Hoosiers, man. It's a lot going on, too, Alec. Yeah, definitely. Uh, at least a, a good time for for some stuff to be happening with you know not a lot not a lot going on outside of basketball right now. Uh, Indiana talked to a lot of guys. Blake Wesley, you had a great piece out on him. A scouting report. I mean, Muhammad, Trey Kaufman, Trey Patterson, Jordan Longino, uh, all these names, guys that are chasing. There's other guys out there as well. But uh, Indiana really trying to co- focus on this core uh, of the three or so guys they're going to bring in in that 2021 class. Yeah, I mean, definitely. They're they're trying to make sure that they have, you know, two or three deep in, in every single position where, you know, if they do miss out on one or two of those guys that, you know, three and four is still probably, you know, one or two on a bunch of other teams lists. So they're, they're doing a great job of making sure that they're getting a lot of guys, uh, you know, out there staying in contact with a lot of guys and, you know, making sure that they're keeping those relationships, uh, you know, good. Blake Wesley is the name that uh, we, we've known for a while. Big kid, out, a great shooter out of South Bend. But uh, we know we, that the, a big is a, a big need for Archie. But uh, this kid can shoot, man, and it's it's one that he's definitely not going to pass up on if he can get him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, you know, we look at Indiana over the past couple of seasons where you know they've really struggled to to hit that three. Uh, but more importantly, you know, after one or two misses, you know, these guys tend not to not to really look for their shot anymore. And obviously you can't have that in, in basketball at all, uh, especially from, you know, some of these backcourt players that really need to to step up. So one thing that, that Blake really has is that that confidence and, and that ability that he can really, you know, after one or two misses, still have that confidence to, to go out there and and assume that that next shot's going to go in. You know, a lot of question about uh, uh, Christian Lander. I, I, he's gonna he's gonna get reclassified. I just don't see that as being yeah. an issue. He's on course. He's on par. So that's not going to be a problem. He's going to be in the twenty twenty class, uh, guard heavy class. So next year, you know, we just talked about Blake, but also guys like uh, Aminu Muhammad, Trey Kaufman, of course, a huge huge point of emphasis for Archie Miller. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you know, Trey Kaufman's probably that that number one, uh, and even maybe one A and one B for Indiana right now. Uh, outside of outside of Trey, they're they're trying to go a little bit more kind of on the wing. Uh, they are pretty guard heavy right now, and especially as you just talked about with uh, Christian Lander, most likely reclassifying to 2020. Uh, they need a little bit more depth out on kind of the three and, and even that kind of stretch four position. Uh, you know, one of those guys is definitely Trey Patterson, who can uh, really kind of play that that kind of stretch forward position that kind of Troy Williams or uh, even Justin Smith uh, more recently has played. So I think, uh, you know, him and, and Trey Kaufman and obviously, like you talked about, Amin Muhammad, kind of those three guys on the wing uh, that, that really are, are going to be that top priority. Trey Patterson out of Jersey, man. It's going to be tough getting him away from Rutgers. They, they've had a, a resurgence in recruiting success here. and He's up there in the northeast corner. He's going to be tough to get out of there, I would think. Yeah, definitely. Even, you know, with Villanova as well. He, he has a, a bunch of different schools that are – Contact with uh, basically, you know, th- th- this one's going to be a little bit longer. This one's not going to be, you know, a decision that's going to come, you know, within the next couple of weeks here. Uh, so, you know, as long as Indiana obviously keeps doing their, uh, you know, keeping up the communication with with Patterson, you know, he he's someone that 
I, I could see definitely fitting in really well with this Indiana system. Next year, I think the Indiana will probably end up with, with three scholarships available, I believe, um, with 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 uh, Christian moving into the 2020 class, unless there's a transfer. Who You talk to a lot of these guys. What's your sense of uh, who's kind of closer to a possible commitment this year before the season starts? Anybody you think for that 2020 class? For the 2021, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would – uh, I think obviously the name that that everyone's kind of latching onto is uh, Trey Kaufman. I, I do think that'll come sooner rather than later. Uh, I think you know the the coronavirus uh, pandemic has definitely kind of impacted his recruitment a little bit more than than some of these other guys. Just because obviously you know Indiana and some of these in state schools and even Louisville have such a good relationship with him already, and, and he's you know been in contact with them a lot more. Uh, but some of these other schools like like a Virginia that just offered him or even a, a Carolina or a Kentucky, those are a couple schools that, that he was really, you know, looking forward to at least, you know, having a little bit more discussions with. And I'm sure, you know, some of these other schools were, were really trying to get him down to campus uh, and get on a visit. And with him not being able to do that, uh, you know, I think that definitely helps Indiana, you know, in the short term here. And then especially when, when things, you know, sort of open up when, when kids start to, to take some visits. Yeah, and he's a kid that uh, prior to talking to him, I, I, Louisville is someone who definitely is is on his radar. Of course, they're they're twenty minutes away from him, but he is so smart. Academics is so important um, that the distance may be alleviated because Indiana is at Purdue so much stronger academically. Uh, it's not even close, and he he's really a a smart kid. Like I said, he wants he's majoring in physics. So yeah, um, exactly. So it tells I, – I see him – you know, he got an offer from Virginia recently, another great school academic-wise. So I think that uh, at the end of the day, academics is going to play a heavier part for him, although he's got a great future as a pro player probably. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, that's a, that's a pretty good one-two punch to have when you're, you know, that, that talented of, a, of an athlete but still that talented in the classroom too. So obviously his options aren't going to be dry anytime soon. Uh, so I think – I think Indiana still sits in, in pretty good uh, shape with, with him, though, coming up. Who who are some names that maybe are under the radar, Alec, that we haven't talked about, uh, that, that they're still like kind of dark horses out there? Yeah, I mean, definitely, obviously, Jordan Longino, he, he's one of these guys that just got offered right when the uh, pandemic started and right when kind of that quarantine happened. Um, so obviously not able to take a visit to, to IU. Uh, he's one of these guys out of Pennsylvania. He has actually just named the – uh, Germantown, um, for out of Germantown High School, the Class 4A Player of the Year yesterday. Uh, so he, he's definitely one of these super talented guards who can play a couple different positions. Uh, but he said that he definitely wants to take a, a visit to Indiana once things do clear up. Uh, Villanova is definitely a team that's going to be tough to beat. Beating this one, kind of that hometown uh, hometown feel nearby with that great tradition of guards that Jay Wright usually has. Um, but you know, I, that's definitely a name that, that I would keep tabs on moving forward here. And of course, uh, guard in that heavy guard class coming in this year, that's going to be something that, that he, he'll be looking at because he's going to have a lot of guys in front of him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the good thing about him though, he can kind of play any, any sort of position on the perimeter. So a one, two or a three, he can really, uh, be able to, to play a couple different positions that Archie Miller loves to have, uh, in the backcourt. Uh, and obviously, you know, you're going to have guys that, you know, may not take those those next steps. Uh, and he's definitely a guy who would be able to, to come in and really kind of impact the game uh, almost immediately just with his, his versatility on both ends and basically his shot making ability, which Indiana struggled with. Yeah, I mean, he this kid can shoot. He he's a shooter that Indiana doesn't have. He shot uh, over forty one percent from deep as a junior. Uh, of course, that's high school three point shooting, but uh, they, he he's thought to to be NBA range shooter. Yeah, no, he he definitely has NBA range, and you can see that uh, when you watch him play, he has the confidence to to pull from basically anywhere. And the thing is, he he usually makes it too. Uh, you know, sometimes he can force force it a little bit on the offensive end, but when he's that efficient. Uh, you know, you really, you really don't mind him taking a couple bad shots because more often than not, they're they're most likely going to go in. Todd, uh, from what we've seen, all these different roster moves and whatnot. What's the, the, the player wise, not not individual, but what do you think Indiana needs to add to their offense as they move forward? From what we've seen last year, well, the shot making ability is is you know first and foremost, and and I think that can go really in position one through four and maybe five. Um, I, I definitely think that they've got to 
they've got to have guys mature. I think this has got to be a, a big year for, you know, current guys they have in Jerome Hunter, um, Armand Franklin. Uh, you know, I expect Al Durham to have his best shooting year of his career. Um, the guys that are there have, have really got to improve. And then the guys coming in, you know, they're, they're it, what you and Alec are talking about at the beginning was guys who are, have a shooter's mentality. I mean, um, you know, Rob Finnessy has grown up as a point guard and, and he's not, he's not really a shooting scoring point guard, which is what you, what a lot of times you want at that position. But it's like you said, when he misses a couple of shots, you know, he finishes the game, you know, Oh, for two or one for three or something like that. And, and a, a shooter, you know, a, a shooter might finish the game over nine. And I'm OK with that because, you know, the, the percentages are going to even out. And and so that, that's what I look for in the guys that are coming in. I mean, they have a shooter's mentality. Anthony Leal will shoot. Trey Galloway will shoot. I mean, these guys coming in are, are have that mentality. So I think the, the balance scoring has got to be, you know, they, they've got to be able to count on. You know, I, I'm not going to say they, they don't want to have to come into every game hoping that Devonte has, you know, 30 like they did last year. I know devonte has gone, but you get my point. And that I don't they don't need to have someone have an extraordinary performance in order to win a game. They need guys to just play consistently and, and average. You know, they need a bunch of guys to average between eight and 13 points. Alec, uh, what, is there a name out there that we haven't talked about that we haven't heard? that's kind of really under the radar so that, that you that you, maybe you're hearing just to keep a eye on. Uh, I mean, one one guy who has kind of popped up in the past couple of days here is uh, uh, Jonathan Lawson, um, Diedrich Lawson's brother in the 2021 20, class here, um, named Gatorade Player of the Year in, in Tennessee there. He, super long, lanky wing, 6'7", uh, still has some maturity to do with his body. Uh, Indiana's been in contact with him. You know, at this point, I, you know, Indiana has such a strong grip on – probably five, six, seven guys that, uh, you know, I really don't think they're going to miss on four or five of those. So as long as they get one or two of those kind of core five guys, they're, they're going to be set up really well for, for, you know, the next couple of years here. So they haven't really been doing a lot of, you know, heavy lifting when it comes to, to searching out a, a bunch of new names. Uh, obviously, you know, there's really nothing else to do right now besides reach out to reach out to prospects. So, you know, you're going to see names pop up, but I think, you know, those four or five guys are really kind of the the core that they're kind of zoning in on moving forward. Yeah, uh, Todd, as we move forward, it's uh, it's almost difficult for the coaching staff to pinpoint new guys because normally you're out seeing That's, play yeah. going on. You, you can't find new guys when you can't see them. That's exactly what this, you know, this period right now, you know, we're, we're in May 1st. We would have just finished up you know, the first week of, of college coaches being able to watch guys play in a late April national AAU tournament. And then, you know, we'd, we'd have a week off right now, and then we'd have two more weeks of it, you know, this middle part of May. And and we would have a bunch of new names. Like Alec would be, you know, this would be one of the busy times right yeah. now for recruiting experts to, to kind of see new names and find that, you know, that Victor Oladipo or that OG Ananobi or, you know, that guy that's, you know, we're 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 going through all the names that are on everybody's national radar, and and believe me, there are guys out there that are, um, you know, going to be like we hear with Dennis Rodman and and Gordon Hayward and guys like that that grow seven inches, you know, after their their senior year of high school and freshman year of college, and um, but I mean, just not even that, just the development of their bodies and and everything in general, and guys that are going to work really hard over the summer. And take advantage of this time, you know, do working one on working on their individual games. So that, that's really what we're going to miss out on, and that's why I keep asking every every coach that we get on, every player that I know plays AAU right now. I keep I keep asking them when we get them on, you know, have you heard anything about the late summer AAU schedule? And and I'm really hoping that they figure out a way to play something in a in a July August type. Uh, I know it'd be different and unusual, but but I think the NCA would make an exception this year and, and figure out a way to get coaches in front of kids because there's going to be a lot of kids miss out on opportunities um, if, if they're not able to play any AAU basketball this summer. Exactly. I My son being one of them. I mean, he's a, he's a junior. I mean, he's the worst year you could possibly have. This yep. is his most important year for AAU basketball, and and uh, it it would be a big it'd be a big loss if they're not able to play. What can, as a father and a former AAU coach on all that play, all that stuff, you check all those boxes. What do you do as a parent to try to help 
your kid now in this world because there's so many kids in this situation that people are out there the fathers that don't have your experience what do they do to help these kids now i I know it sounds it's kind of old school and i know it sounds kind of stupid but we're kind of in old school situation right now only we've got new technology to do it and that you know i would put together as many um highlight tapes are one thing Um, coaches can see through those i mean i could put a highlight tape together of a of a third grader right now and make him look pretty good uh, if I just show what he did good throughout a season. But, I mean, just putting together some stuff and reaching out to coaches, it it it, it really works more than you might think. Now, the first, first question coaches are going to ask when they've never seen you or heard of you before is, how tall is he and, and you know, what's his grade point average and all those kinds of things. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's truly, as a parent, the best thing you can do is put together some type of, a video um, showing the skills. And, and even if it's one on nobody, even if it's just individual skills and workouts, that's what the NFL combine guys were doing. I mean, they were sending out just, just stuff of them own showing their footwork and showing what they do. A, a coach and a, a scout can look at a player just shooting around and just making moves in the lane and tell whether the kid has a lot of potential or not. And, and, you know, but but I'm not going to act like it's not a big loss. I mean, there are a lot of kids that are going to miss out on scholarship opportunities, not to the Indianas or Villanovas or Kentuckys of the world, but but to you know some of the smaller schools and and just continuing on their their basketball careers. It's there's going to be a lot of kids miss out on it. You're exactly right, uh, Alec. Uh, what what do you have coming up? Now you're always working on so much, doing a tremendous. He does a tremendous job. Make sure you go to the Hoosier.com so you can follow Alec and uh, his complete coverage on uh, basketball recruiting for the Hoosiers. But what's coming up next for you? Yeah, well, I actually uh, had the chance to talk to AJ Moye a little bit last night uh, about his connection with uh, the newest uh, offer for for Indiana, Sky Clark. Um, they have a they kind of go back a little bit uh, past like five seven years here. Uh, him knowing his entire family. So um, talked to him last night, got a little bit more insight on kind of who Sky Clark is and a little bit more about his game. And, and we'll have something up later today about that. Excellent. That's a name right there that uh, we haven't talked about. Sky Clark, a new name on the Indiana Fold. What do you know about him? What can the fans expect to hear about him? Yeah, he's uh, he's in the 2022 class. He's moving back to Tennessee here. He's actually going to uh, the same high school that Darius Garland attended. So you know, a little bit of a connection there, obviously connection with AJ Moye, but he's a super skilled uh, combo guard. Uh, definitely the ability to play both on and off the ball. Super big, super long as a point guard, which uh, I think the the game is kind of trending towards now. Uh, but he he has the skills to to be one of the one of the best players in the in that 2022 class for sure. Todd, the, the talent, we're, there's no doubt we're going to see a, a rise in talent for Indiana basketball. They, all these recruits that are coming in, it's, it's taken a few years, but the talent level is going to be extremely higher than it was four years ago. Yeah, I mean, there's no question. And, and, I, and I like, you know, I think one of the things that you and I talk about all the time, I mean, recruiting is one thing and looking at skills of players, but then getting to know the players individually and, and what they're like as a, as their personalities and their families is it's, that's the next level of it. And, and Indiana just has a great group of kids coming in when it comes to, you know, how they were brought up and how they were raised and what kind of kids they are. And, um, and, and that's really what you look for now. And, and truly I, they're bringing in talent. They're now bringing in guys that, um, you know, that have some Indiana flavor. I, 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 you, we have to do all the recruiting. I, I say this all the time on here. We've got to have one. If you've got a, a three man recruiting class, one of those guys has to be from out of state. Um, unless it's an unusual circumstance, but, but you also, you need to have one or two of those guys be from the state of Indiana also. And, um, you know, that doesn't limit recruiting. It just changes the dynamic of, of who all you can bring in at a time. But Hey, you can't you I know you said it coming in I was going to comment on it when you said it that IU looks like they might have three openings next year <laughs> and and that's 12 months away from right now they, they yeah. may have seven <laughs> openings by the time that gets here you, just, you never know with with the way things are nowadays but um you know it, it I love the I love where they're going I will be I'm looking more forward to this season coming up than than any season I can remember in a long long time for Indiana because I want to see these Indiana kids come in here and not just play well, but compete and push the kids that are already at IU uh, to, to have to play harder and have to play better. And, and I'm really looking forward to this season. Make sure you give Alec a follow on Twitter at Al Lastly. 
You can me find him there. Also find him at thehoosier.com. Brother, thank you so much. You're doing a great job. Looking forward to uh, keep knocking it out. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. See you, brother. Alec Lasley joining us here from thehoosier.com. We've got uh, coming up, Dr. Kyle Hornsby is going to join us. As uh, Dane Fife effectively refers him to, to him as uh, Horny, uh, the nickname from, <laughs> from the days of old. Uh, well, it'd be nice to have Dane Fife on here with those guys. because You just know he's just going to no, give them would. all he's the grief. Annoying. All the grief that they could stand. He's annoying. We don't need. Uh, We've had Dane Fife. You know what? You, you're uh, my Dane Fife meter still full. I'm still, <laughs> still full from the last time he was. I on. told Dane the other day that uh, I had uh, Kirk Haston coming on and and uh, Hornybrook coming on, his former teammates. He's like, yeah, good luck with those Hicks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, it is Friday, and it's it, for what it feels like a good Friday. The yeah, weather's going to be good, so let's have a good Friday, everybody. And just I hope everybody has a great Friday. But we got a lot more coming up. Dr. Kyle Hornsby is going to join us next year on the program. We got lots more coming up from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Coyle and Larry back with more after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit fda.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. Hey, it's Michael Lewis, former Indiana University player and current UCLA assistant basketball coach, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million-dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Whoa. 
Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Corey Larry coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by rivals here on this Friday. Joined now by Dr. Kyle Hornsby, another former Hoosier. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, we appreciate you having it. Uh, joining us here, Todd Lurio's side as you sound always. Like you sound like you're in the middle of surgery. Like, are you in a you in a surgical room? <laughs> you in the no, ER? no, no. That, that, they won't let they won't let us do any of our surgeries just yet, unless they're emergent. Uh, I, I do sparingly sur- sparing surgeries uh, over the last month or so with COVID. Uh, we're gearing up a little bit next week, but no, definitely not in the hospital right now. If I don't have to be there, if anybody doesn't have to be there, they shouldn't. <laughs> Oh, Todd was all just he Todd's been waiting. He's got a list of, of COVID I have 47, questions. Seven COVID questions when, we're gonna need all, you to clear up for us. He was all fired up <laughs> yesterday, boy. He was man, he was just ready to go. I know. I I, I think I um I've had a tendency to schedule meetings since I'm actually not in the hospital. And I've scheduled more meetings than I ever have. I've realized I'm not a good scheduler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well as long as you're a good doctor that's all we'll carry that's yeah, why, that's why you have nurses. That much, why you have that much better <laughs> oh man t- t- what, what is uh, so what's going on with you you can't do what you normally do how are you having to deal with people uh, do are you doing video the, are you doing the zoom zoom conference or i mean uh zoom i guess patient visits uh, Zoom has been, uh, that's what some people started doing with Zoom phone calls. Um, recently, I had read a couple of things that Zoom wasn't quite HIPAA compliant. There were some things that were going on. Uh, so we do, uh, at least what I do, is I do something called virtual visits. It's through a, a Amwell, uh, which is online. And it's the same thing. You're doing person-to-person uh, gotcha. visits across the computer screen. They have their phone or their computer screen oh, or just phone visits. If I know the patient well, I'll just do a phone visit with them. But anything to, to keep them out of the clinics and out of the hospital and, and, and in general is what the medical profession is trying to do. That's where you get Todd on there. Get, get have you uh, have you have you called Pat Graham and consulted with Pat Graham since his heart attack? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't realize that Pat Graham was going to be a, a, a resource for me to have to decide yeah. what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to catch up with him, I guess. Yeah. So all this talk about sports, Kyle, the, the, the thought we don't know when we're, when we're going to have the return of sports through all this this craziness. Uh, I mean, th- th- you're someone who played at a very high level, and you deal with this on, on the on the daily level as well. What are your thoughts on this? I'm not asking you to 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 give us definite information because we don't have that. But uh, just uh, as far as sports re- sports returning, it, it's going to be a slow process for people, and I think they have to get used to that now. Yeah, I think a, a good person to ask is Rink. I think he's he's been intricately involved in uh, sports, especially in the Big Ten. Uh, and, you know, he has a lot of international experience as well. Just from my own personal viewpoint, I think it's going to be a slow process. You may see some sports start up in the fall. Um, I don't think it'll be across the board. Um, and it'll only be if, if students come back. I can't see if students don't come back how they're going to start sports. So uh, I think a lot of that will depend on how quickly we can get some testing uh, across the board. Uh, And especially, in my opinion, antibody testing, uh, because the antibody testing is how we're going to tell who actually has had the virus and has now recovered and is not going to be at least as susceptible. There are some some reports of people getting it twice. I don't know uh, clearly that that has happened. But uh, in general, if you have antibodies, you're not going to get the virus. So if we see that the a bulk of the population has actually had it and not even realized it, well, that's going to make everybody feel a lot better about getting things going again. We just don't have that information yet. I can't wait to get it. I, I just I'm not to, not the disease, but just to get the antibodies and get it yeah. over. With. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'm want glad that. To clarify that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. Just give me the antibodies. Let me slide through that. But part, but in so. all but in all reality, Kyle, wouldn't we rather get it? Like people who are healthy, I know. I know. Like Was Sweden, and, Sweden, or Norway? No, you, somebody you, doing you, that? In my, in my opinion, you you want to avoid this. Um, it can affect healthy people uh, and make them critically ill, and 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 actually to higher mortality, and even healthy people. Uh, so you, you don't want to get this. Um, is it going to be impossible to to come into contact with it at some point if we don't have a vaccine soon? I think it's going to be very difficult to avoid it completely. Uh, for such an extended period of time. 
uh, from a medical profession, what we don't want to see is the rapid surge and influx of patients into the hospital system that overwhelms our hospital systems uh, and leads to higher mortality in the long run because of such a surge of patients. Um, we would like it to be more of a trickle where we can take care of the patients as each patient should be taken care of and not to have to form some type of a triage where we say, okay, this person, we, we are not going to be able to help them this person has a higher risk of living, so we're going to help this person and this person out a lot. Uh, because that's what some hospitals across the across the world have had to do, and that is not what we want. No, no, it's not. And I know a lot of people are looking toward the fall and, and, and trying to make sure that, that those things don't happen. But uh, let's hope uh, eventually we'll get yeah. back to normally and uh, we'll get there and uh, we'll be having fun again. And speaking of fun, we had uh, your, your old teammate Kirk Hasten on earlier this week. Dane Fife was on <laughs> a week or so ago. Dane said good luck with those two hicks that are coming on. <laughs> but, <laughs> and, of course, that's uh, we the had, pot we, call the kettle we had, quite a, we had quite a few hicks in our team. <laughs> you know, and I was just thinking, I mean, every group has the group. You know, Todd's teams, they, they, those guys had that core. And you guys had this. What, what a unique group of characters you guys had. Uh, I think when you have teams that gel, you, you have a wide variety of personalities. But all the personalities have a common goal. And it really makes it uh, a lot of fun. That's what makes team sports what they are. Um, what is less enjoyable, and, and I've been a part of teams like this too, is when you do have all those personalities, but there's no common goal. And everybody has different priorities, and it, it makes it miserable, but it also provides huge learning experiences and, and team dynamics and helps you out in the long run throughout life because you learn how to, to be a part of a team. I'm sure Todd has had plenty of opportunities where he's been a part of different team aspects and he's like, well, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we, we gotta make, no we gotta make some improvements here in team dynamics, but this isn't going to last. Um, and so it's the same thing with any sport, but we had uh, a couple teams that really had good chemistry and those teams were the most successful. Was, was Dane, Dane, considering he was also a cross dresser, he was probably the Dennis Rodman <laughs> of your team. <laughs> That's kind of I, I kind of try to pin, to pinpoint who's going to be the oddball and Dane definitely I know he liked to wear women's clothes a lot and dyed his hair all the time. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, there were there were rumors. I didn't hang out with him a lot at night, so I won't speak to that. Uh, but he was the um, he and Moy were probably the most interesting characters we had, uh, and and Dane is the one that obviously I was a roommate with him for a little while and. Uh, coming from a you know, population of 800 uh, and going to Bloomington, which was like a big city to me, and then them sticking me with this kid from Michigan who was a loose cannon uh, was, was an eye-opening experience. And then they also threw in and said, oh, you know, why not? Why not? We, let's just have both of them room with Wrecker. Why, why don't we just add that in there? So it was a, it was a wild house. Oh man, I texted into the show, uh, Ryan uh, from Michigan asking, what was your favorite thing? Is there a favorite part about playing at IU for you? For me, it, it always has been. I, and it, this sounds very mundane. It sounds very, um, uh, very boring. Uh, but God, I, I love, I love going to the gyms for practices and being a part of that team camaraderie. That team camaraderie at Indiana, when you have good chemistry, you just you just can't beat it. And I loved it. Um, you know, not everybody. Some people are gamers. <laughs> and I get that. Uh, but I, I love that dynamic. Now, don't get me wrong. I love games. I love going out there and feeling that adrenaline rush. But there's something about going into a gymnasium every day and trying to get better that I just really enjoyed. And I enjoyed it with those guys. Yeah, you you lost me at practice. <laughs> <laughs> there, I mean, there were probably I, I, a few guys. Yeah, I probably would have lost at practice. I think I think Newton, I would have lost at practice. I think Coverdale, I would have lost at practice. <laughs> yeah, I some mean, of those guys I, like, are gamers. I, you were a gamer, I huh? That, I love that same camaraderie. I just liked it at Jackson Heights Apartments rather than <laughs> rather than in Assembly Hall. <laughs> oh. 
But yeah, I, what you're talking about is it, it, it's you know when teams do things that are special. I mean, I, I'm sure like like I, I expected it to be your answer. I expected the answer to be you know playing for the national championship and going to the final four in 2002 and that special run that you guys went on and. And but but I mean it's it's actually the root cause of what allowed that to happen. Yeah, that, that's that, the fact. It's exactly, it's exactly right. You guys, exactly when right. you when you're able, this is what you know. And I get Coach Knight gets a lot of credit or most of the credit for your team in that 2002 year and all that. Anyway, mm-hmm. but I and mm-hmm. I love Mike Davis. I'm not taking anything away from him. But one of the yeah. things that Coach Knight's teams always, you know, not not always. What what so many of them were able to accomplish was. When you could go out and and do things and win games that you weren't even sure you could win, like you when you're mm-hmm. able to, when he's able to pull things out of you that and you do things that you didn't even know you could do, uh, that's when you start doing special things and that's when teams really bond together and um, and it, yeah. So I mean, I know exactly what you're talking about. It, it's really interesting that you gave that answer though because I was I expected just the vanilla answer of oh you know the run to the final four. I, that's probably the answer I would have given. But since you're a doctor, you're a little smarter than the rest of us. <laughs> you're, you're a smarter <laughs> hick than the rest of us. Well, I, I will I will say that uh, that that's my personality. I like to uh, I, I I think your your quote about people coming together and achieving things that they didn't realize they could achieve. And it creates a bonding experience is exactly right. Because we, we came off of, uh, you know, we lost to Pepperdine, uh, my freshman year of eligibility, we lose to Kent state, my sophomore year of eligibility. And then we come in our junior year and, and we start out at seven and five. You know, that's, that's, that's at that time, that that's unheard of in Indiana. You, you, right. you, that shouldn't happen. It still shouldn't happen. But we've had some rough years along the way since then. Uh, and so you, you then get going in, in the Big Ten Conference, and we start winning because we started to – we had put in the work. We had put in the effort. Everybody keep, kept putting their head down and moving forward, thinking we're going we're gonna to turn the corner. And then we beat Michigan State handily at IU, and then it just started rolling. And we beat Iowa at Iowa, and, and there were several games we, we won along the way that – in the previous two years of eligibility, those games may have been lost. Good thing and you, you start, you start believing, again. and then everybody comes together. Yeah, good thing you didn't lose to Kent State the second time. Oh God, I don't, I don't think that you guys was would an have ass. Me on, that was an ass flipping. <laughs> Cal Horns being hot. I think you guys would have uh, uh, left me off the list of people to invite to your show. We lost the <laughs> second time. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that was an incredible, uh, incredible experience. Uh, if you if you had to, to, if you asked me to pick one moment that I enjoyed the most, the moment I enjoyed the most was cutting down the nets to go to the Final Four after we beat Kent State. I mean, uh, that, talk about a, a rewarding experience. Where I know Todd, you you had plenty of these where uh, on your, your your very good teams that you were part of that you you have this achieving moment and then you get a chance to reflect and say. Wow, you know we we put in a lot of work and it was all worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that that's you know you don't really look at it at that time, but especially you know now once we get up into being forty plus years old, you know we we uh, we reflect back on those things and are like, man, I, I look at these kids this year that that you know had an opportunity to would have gone to the NCAA tournament and then, you know, there would have been a special run. Some team would have made a special yeah. run and that team was you guys back in 2002. And I just, it's, it was so much fun. I, that was my first year of doing the radio and I could, I, I swear I had as much fun in that year as I did in the years that I played. And when we went to the final four on our own, like I, I just, that team was so much fun to watch because of exactly what you said. I mean, they just, they gelled at the right time. And, mm-hmm. and I think that's why Tom Izzo has gotten, has gotten to where he is and is recognized as one of the best coaches yeah. in the country because somehow, and, and it's really hard to pinpoint exactly what he does, but somehow he figures out a way to let his team fail kind of early in the season, almost every yeah. year. And and then yeah. by the time late January, February, and then March comes along, you, you can't beat them. Yeah. It, uh, they, they get hardened. <laughs> they do. It, it's crazy. I mean, and he's, he's the best at it. I mean, I'm not saying he's the best coach yeah. in the world, but but I and I think I think he's up there with him. But I mean, he just he has a special ability to do that that I don't think very many coaches are accomplish it on a year to year basis like he does. 
Well, he's he's, got, he's one of those coaches these days, uh, and I and I've never been in a practice with Coach Izzo. I only see him on the floor, and uh, you know, I only hear stories. But from the stories, he sounds like a guy that not everybody can play for. It's kind of like the what people used to say about Coach Knight. Yeah, you know, not not every, it's not meant for everybody. You better be ready to put in the work and and take some abuse along the way, or, or you're not going to make it. You're going to end up transferring out, or you're going to end up at the end of the bench. But he seems to even get those players that seem soft, and he toughens them up, yeah. and, it, and it happens rapidly. I, it, it, he must have a, 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 a way of kind of building them up and tearing them down over and over and over again to keep their confidence up from, from just killing them. You know, you, you, if you beat somebody down long enough, they're just going to – most people, if you beat them down long enough, eventually they're going to give up. Yeah, they're going to crack. Yeah, well, they're going to crack. But Great he, example. I don't, see, I don't see many of his crack. It was an Aaron Henry. The, uh, I think it was two seasons ago. He, he was they were coming off the floor and he just ripping his ripping him. And he and Tom Izzo got so much flack over that. But then all the players came out and said, "No, we he, he's he, we know, but he knows what he's doing. He, he, it's all love." And he, they, right. they, they, it was a perfect yeah. example because all the people just went berserk, saying, "What is wrong with him?" Blah blah blah. It's like, what are you talking about? And it's just not, people don't always get those relationships. Yeah. This right. is not the Tom, I, this is I not agree. the Tom is no show, but I mean, you yeah. also got to think he's accomplished what he's accomplished having to overcome Dane Fife on his bench for like eight or nine. <laughs> years. Can, you, that in can you imagine, can you imagine having Dane on the bench just kind of chirping? I can just no. picture him just chirping, no. chirping, never, chirping, never chirping, 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 chirping. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I guarantee you. I guarantee you Dane, he's Dane's, got a, Dane's got a great right basketball now. mind, though, and I'm sure he. I, I can only imagine it. at some point he's going to get a fantastic job. It's going to happen. Oh, maybe yeah, in Michigan State. There, who knows? No, there is no question no. about it. He's going to be. Yeah. He'll. Ha, he'll. His next job is not going to be one where it's a stepping stone job. His next job will be that big job. Yeah, I agree. I hey, Kyle, I got to get a question a lot. Back, we'll talk about the, that 2002 run against Duke and Kent State there at Rupp Arena. When you guys are going through that, you're playing Duke, the, the number one defending national champion, and it's in Lexington, in Rupp Arena, at a place that, that Indiana fans just despise. But was was that lost upon you guys of where you were? Was the focus so much on what you were doing, or did all of that come into play? Uh, if it came into play for anybody that didn't talk about it, I mean, uh, you know, I, when we got to that point, Kentucky was such an afterthought. They were they were not even on our minds. Uh, I think they were even weren't they even out of the tournament at that time? They were they weren't even playing. I think they had already gotten beaten. Uh, I think that's what made it. Up. That even made it even sweeter for Indiana fans. Yeah, yeah. I think they already got. Somebody might correct me historically, but uh, but anyway. Um, that was the farthest thing from our minds uh, when we were playing at Rupp. By the way, it's a great arena, but <laughs> but uh, uh, that definitely was not something on our minds then. Yeah, and and I got to add something, Todd. We I just had this conversation. Uh, somebody brought in a video of kind of the the ending of the Duke game, and they they brought it in, and it was a video. I cannot find the the recording of the radio because I heard it at one point and. Hearing you and Fish away. do it just gives me chills every time I hear it. But I can't I, find the recording. I, I figured out a way to go into the archives of, of Google <laughs> and delete it. Because it's one of the more embarrassing things that I've ever done. So you two can no longer it. find it. Like it, it's gone. Like nobody will hear it again. It's gone. Oh, Kyle, did you know? So sad. Did, did you know, Kyle, that that uh, Todd had to write an apology letter to the NCAA after that game? <laughs> oh no, I didn't. I did. Yeah, I, when I, I was standing on the table, on the you know on the side on the scorers table where Fish and I did right next to the bench right there. By the time uh -huh. the clock hit zeros, I was standing on the table and I was high fiving Coverdale and Dane Fife and, and Fish before we could go to the Final Four. I had to write an apology letter. Actually, no, 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 no. I had to read it on the air before the Kent State game. 
And then I, I had to know that. Yeah. Okay. And then I had to, I had to send it to the NCAA before uh, we were allowed to before I was allowed to go to the Final Four. I think that See, is there you awesome. go. There you go. Of all the things that the NCAA should care about, is worried about, right? Should, yeah, that's it. that should be so low on the totem pole. It shouldn't even. It should be a blip on the radar. I mean, that's ridiculous. And that's why the NCAA gets such a bad name. Look, that, that's the stuff they cared about. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean, I we're, know. We're, we're supposed to be impartial on on press row down there, and I'm like, I work for Indiana Radio Network. I know. Like, <laughs> how how impartial is that? Like, give yeah. me a break. <laughs> if you just listen to the show, you can see it's not impartial. Yeah, pretty much. Come on here anytime. I rip everybody <laughs> up for Indiana. Oh, oh man, I can't I, thank you, you enough. If you do find it, I want to see it. <laughs> we, 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 I'm going to look at that for for you, okay. man. All I right. can't thank you enough for taking the time because I know you're uh, even though the COVID nineteen going on, you're even busier probably dealing with all that. But uh, taking time to talk to us, we we super appreciate it. Hey, it's my pleasure, and I and I, I I do sincerely apologize. I, my scheduling got mixed up, and I I, I apologize about yesterday. It, it made our flight even fault. better. One hundred percent your fault. <laughs> so you, you I owe expected it. to hear. I expected to hear a lot more from Todd about. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> About big time in and so forth, and I did not I hear anything, over, Todd. I didn't hear anything. I turned you. over, yeah, I turned over a new leaf of forgiveness, and, <laughs> and yeah. I, I'm I'm good with it. Actually, I, I just didn't tell him that you were big time in this, Kyle. So that's why he just okay. didn't know. <laughs> Tom Coverdale never stood us up. I know that. <laughs> I, I, as I've always said, Tom's a better man than me. <laughs> Kyle, brother, we love you. We appreciate you so much, and I uh, look forward to uh, getting out and play some golf or something one day. That sounds great. See Kyle buddy. Hornsby joining us here on uh, Indiana Sports Beat, and we could not be any more grateful, man. What a fun, fun conversation. Those great guys. That's but that shows you again. You go back to that team. That's the kind of guys that are on that team, man. They're fun, uh, smart, uh, just dedicated. It just those are the guys you want, man. I hate talking to like Steve Green and Hornsby. These guys that are doctors, like they make <laughs> me feel like such a loser and such a dipshit. Like it's just crazy. So thanks a lot, Kyle. Appreciate it. Well, that's going to wrap up the show today. A great, another great week. Uh, thanks again to Dr. Kyle Hornsby for joining us and Alec Lasley from thehoosier.com. Some great recruiting uh, information for Indiana basketball. Make sure you go to thehoosier.com, get signed up for that. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, Todd's going to hit the golf course today. And hopefully, we'll have uh, plenty more coming back on Monday, guys. For Jake and Todd, I'm Jim Coyle. I will see you on the radio.